Tuesday, January 24th, market analysis, Stan Ehrlich, 9.30 California time, so we're about the middle almost of the trading day. I always start out with the S&P 500, basically the stock market indexes and moving into futures and then sectors and Forex and so on. <clears throat> we are in a very important juncture. Yesterday's high attacked the neckline on an eight month head and shoulder bottom starting in June of last year, summer of last year. And the head of which is October 13th, which was a bullish engulfing ER buy signal uh, automated we caught the bottom of the market so far, and it was at the bottom of a channel, and it was oversold, and a variety of reasons to think it was going to turn around. October lows, a major one. Now, we need to cross above 403 and a quarter on a closing basis, usually with a very large trading range day and large volume, and maybe there's a gap involved gapping above uh, the neckline or somewhere, a breakaway gap. It, it'll go down to the books as a breakaway gap in uh, retrospect. So we haven't got that. In fact, the S&P at the moment is extremely uh, steady, down only 40 cents, not even a point or even a half a point. So we have no downside follow through after a little weaker opening and messing around a bit. So far, no upside follow through either. But the stronger you get, the closer you're going to be to that neckline. And we'll see what happens in that case. Now, this last shoulder low was on December, what was it? December 22nd, which was sooner than I expected by about a month and a little bit higher in price as well. Nevertheless, I saw the trading range and we took care of that. And I expected a little rally, but not as much as we've got. Um, so I'm not sure if we're going to break out of this or not. I still have enough time, not much, for a sharp break to make this timing work a little better and the formation kind of round out a little bit more, but it doesn't have to happen that way. That could have been it, December. Just not quite positive yet. Again, a close certainly above 410 is not only breaking everything, but you know, long-term new highs. But for the moment, 403, plus a hair, that is going to start to turn me much more bullish and much more interesting. By the way, we have a minimum upside objective on this formation of almost new historic highs, 476, call it 477. That is extremely close to the previous historic highs that were in Jan early January of the last year. Um, that's December 30th. The exact date, I think, was the 4th of January. Correct, January 4th, 22. So that bear market of uh, 2022, I think, may be over. And I'm looking for excuses, reasons, support to vindicate uh, a breakout. Substantial, whatever. Now, the other indexes. The DIA has extremely similar situation as you might expect. The head is only a double bottom instead of a single October 13th, which is the second low of this double bottom. So what? Hey, it turned around. It's a minor bullish formation. Uh, the upside objective on that was right here, and it was met very quickly. It only took about a week or two. Uh, the neckline in this case slants upwards. The Dow has been getting a little bit stronger, a little bit quicker lately. So we are at the moment in the side in the middle of a sideways trading range that really started in November. No breakouts, not super close to anything super important. Kind of in no man's land momentarily, in the middle of a pennant formation. You're waiting for direction, which is usually pennants a continuation formation. So that implies up, we'll see. Um, the Q's, a much different story. They have crossed their major long-term bear trend line. They have crossed the neckline on the feasible head and shoulder bottom. The neckline was almost 
parallel and identical, not quite, but very close to the neckline and the long-term trend line being the same thing. So when one was crossed, both were crossed for all practical purposes. We are maintaining today's price range completely above both of those lines. So that bodes very bullishly for the QQQ. We need now to get above these recent rally highs that were on December 13th. And that would be 297 and small change. 296.80, somewhere around 297. So getting above that level and closing above that level pretty much cements the intermediate and long-term indicators turning bullish. But we talked about this back in October for the seasonal lows. I didn't think it was going to work out quite so great. So far, so good. We may have picked not only the top of the bull, beginning of the bear market at the top, extreme early January, or, and, by the way, not or, and the low in October 13th. That would be pretty amazing. Okay, next. Futures. We have a brand new signal today. It is in heating oil. We have a bearish engulfing in progress at the moment. Extremely similar to the one, two, three that we had around the topping out process. Unfortunately, we didn't catch the highest high. We caught the third or yeah, third highest high on November 8th, which did produce a heck of a good trade. All right, so brand new ER automated short position in heating oil. Obviously, I'm turning bearish. By the way, it was also overbought for three days prior, so kind of warned about a turn. Next, gold. Oh, boy, another new high, but very slowly. We're not really making particularly super great upside progress, but definitely some. I think this is cruising for a bruising and might end up with a very sharp break all of a sudden. For the moment, I would not chase it up. I'd be looking for sell signals and uh, watch out, my opinion. Next, OJ. The head and shoulder top formation is still viable. We need to go down and break that neckline and start dropping below 200 in the next few days. It should not go sideways any length of time. Certainly not rally. That would start to ruin the formation. It's just simply going to do it or not on the downside. Next. And the minimum downside objective, I'll just ballpark this real quick. 24, 5. So you got 20, 19, 21. 20-ish, 95, 75, right there. That is your approximate or pretty close minimum downside of objective, 275, maybe 274-ish. Next, soybeans. Big pennant formation, big sideways, nothing. We did catch the turn. The outside down day, ER sell signal, red, was last week on January 18th, Wednesday. Today, eh, a little bit higher for the high, closes a tiny bit higher, and the low is a little bit higher than yesterday. So a little bit of an update, but nothing particularly unusual. It went down one, two, three days in a row after the sell signal, and now one little update. Mm. Next. ER is not uh, uh, the ES, S&P 500 mini is not only a futures contract, but it is an index as well. So everything that I said, about the spider applies to the E-mini, explanation point. Next, platinum. We caught the top high day by just a smidge on January 11th. And we've got a couple of up days behind us now. I don't see anything significant about this low. So I think it's gonna be challenged, but we are in an uptrend. We did hold what basically appears to be a nice bull trend line. I didn't draw the line in, but you can imagine across these lows in general. We've got the higher highs all the way across here, basically. Um, I guess it's it could be over. We got pretty damn close to being oversold. Okay, that does it. So although it wasn't officially oversold, you did have kind of a big whipsaw in the last couple of days. I think it's going to be neutral to higher at this point. So. 
It's only been up a couple of days. I think it's going to work its way higher. Next, that was platinum. Now we're looking at silver, SI. Neutral for the moment. Trend is up. Looking for a test of the highs or new highs very soon. I think yesterday's washout making new lows but not staying below the previous lows is an indication that the market wants to try to go up like a ping pong ball, a ping pong ball being pushed underwater. When you let go of it, it pops right back up. So um, that's what I think we're in the process of doing is popping right back up. Next, sugar. Head and shoulder top possible. I drew the neckline in, downward slanted slightly. Needs to start going Tierra del Fuego south real quick. Didn't happen today. Nothing special about it. It's an outside up day, in fact, but we're very, very neutral on the RSI, right in the middle zone, 40 to 60. Just a little bit above and below 50. So looking at this head and shoulder top, and that's the best I can say for the moment until something else happens for sugar. Next is bond futures and then the 10-year notes. I've been talking about the bonds building a long-term bottom of some sort or another. I can't put my handle on it yet. Can't put my... Um, I can't decide what kind of a formation it might be, um, if any. So neutral to bottom building, period. Next is tenure notes. Although we made a new high and a new high close a few days ago, it did not hold up within a day and a fraction. It's closing back into the same trading range for the last two and a half days now. So maybe it'll sink off a little bit more in this trading range. Maybe it'll hold. I can't tell. But the trend has started to be a lot more sideways to maybe up, depending upon your backward looking time frame. And as you know, I'm looking for a significant bottom to be built, but not too much more to say than that at the moment. Next, crude oil. Remember, we got a brand new bearish engulfing short sale signal on heating oil today, so far. Not the case in crude. Would be nice if they correlated you know, energy in general. Now, um, did get overbought. We did slip off a bit today. Nothing super special. Trend is basically down. I'm a slow bear. Next, meal. I'm a slow bull. That, that's it. Next, corn. <clears throat> I'm just slow. This is going sideways. Um, it's a giant pennant formation, if you ask me. Next. Cocoa. Divergences, you see a new high in price, but not a new high in the RSI. And the RSI, by the way, is Wells Wilder's RSI, but I customized the heck out of it. Uh, Wells taught this uh, to me himself. Next, bean oil. Bullish engulfing at the bottom. So we caught that very nicely. It was a nice rally for a few weeks. Otherwise, it's a gigantic pennant formation. Big sideways, nothing. Next, live cattle. Got oversold. Coming up a little bit. Bull trend. Think it's going to go higher. Next, <coughs> natural gas. Got oversold, interestingly enough. When we get a self signal and heat, we get a natural gas oversold condition. But the trend is down, so that doesn't mean it's going to bottom out. It just implies that there's a better chance for it. And you have an inside trading range today. There's nothing happening. I'm bearish, but slow. Next, high-grade copper. Looks like it's going to flatten out a little bit. Got overbought, very overbought, way overbought. Look at that, 90 or so for multiple days. So I'm looking for a minor top. Come back down a little bit below four. Next, wheat. Got to point out, because it is spectacular, that we have a short sale signal at the top of a series of limit up, some of them lock limit up all day long, open high low close is one tick. So obviously more buyers than sellers at the market um, for a, a period of time. But we got the top of it. That's what the ER sell signal and ER buy signals or ER signals in general is built to do. Not that sp the spectacular like that doesn't happen, but oh gosh, once every 10 or 20 years. Um, another great signal lately, what? Nothing. 
we've hit out of new lows. We had a rally up to resistance, and then we start to make new lows again. I'm bearish slowly. Next, live hogs, oversold. Don't chase the market down. I'm looking for a buy signal. You got a possible little tiny double bottom here over the last four days. I'm not so sure that's going to hold up. Got to open higher and basically run ranked up for that to work. Next, and that's small, very small, no big deal. A little tiny rally in the bear market. This is coffee. Okay, now we're back up to fairly decent resistance. RSI is not that high at 60.55. So um, maybe there's a little upside elbow room still up to maybe 174-ish. But this is a bear market. I don't think it's bottoming out yet. I do think the lows for the trend are going to be challenged and make new lows very soon, a week or two. Without maybe much more rally, I do not want to close above 175 and a half. That can change the picture. If we get there pretty quickly, then we're going to be overbought, and I'm going to feel pretty good about a, you know, turnaround. Next. Hitting oil, our brand new short sell signal, ER automated system. We started with this. I'm going to leave off here again. The Forex markets. We have the euro, the first, was overbought, not gaining any more ground of any significance. I think it's going to roll over a little bit. The trend is up. Minor top, I'm expecting, but the trend is higher. Give it a few weeks and probably a new high for the trend, if not sooner than that. Next is the opposite, the DX, the dollar index. It's the continuation contract for it. it is trying to make a low. The trend is down. Pretty much the upside down of the euro. Next. The trend is down, but we've got two buy signals. And the last one was really good. We bought it below the intended bid on the opening the day after the green bullish engulfing, which wasn't the low for the trend, but it was the second lowest low and the beginning of the up move. <clears throat> so which one's more important? Both, I think. So uh, it's working, but a little bit of a down day today. I want to close above the high of last week. That would be a, a high and a close above the signal day, green day. Next, uptrend. I'm bullish, but we're close to being overbought again. It's a zigzag market on the way up. Uh, I think we're going to at least get back up to about 70.72 or higher. Next, uh, dollar Canada. Um, a buy signal that didn't work. Small loss, trying to make new lows, not particularly successful at it at the moment, but I think it's going to break down and make a low, a new low easily this week. Next, oops, that's the wrong one. Here we go. Turn this down, new lows for many months. Major historical resistance stopped the rallies back in uh, September, October, or October, November, and here we are, well below all the other previous lows and highs since early in the year, April. Well, new lows for the move soon. Next, uh, Euro, uh, Great British Pound. Neutral, next. And that would be the last of the Forex. A real quick listing here of the sectors. We've got some interesting stuff happening. We've got a brand new buy signal today in XLP. This is an outside up day within um, the time frame allotted for an oversold condition, which was the last couple of days of last week in this case. So an ER buy signal, but not the lowest low. So far, so good. I need to start closing above today's high, the buy signal or trigger day, signal day, that is signal day. Because the high today and yesterday basically was a test of resistance, and you're not quite strong enough. So I want to see a close above today's high to feel good about this. One way or the other, we're always having an STS smart trailing stop, and that's a, the yellow dots. If we get into the trade in the next three days for ER3, remember ER1 is always in the trade whenever you see a green or red daily price bar with this strategy. Next chart. I-Y-E had a sell signal 
We're not out of the trade, never made a higher high, even after three days. And now we're starting to slip a little. Don't like the fact that it closed near its opening, which is at the high of the day. Have to make new lows for a couple of previous days. I'd rather it had closed lower or near today's lows or even, you know, lower the better. Um, so a question in my mind, let's see what happens. Let's see another down day or two or three. Next is SMH, and this is the semiconductor ETF overbought, especially yesterday. Today, it's sinking back down a little bit. Nothing much. Can't, can't say anything particularly great about this, except that new highs for an extended period. <coughs> Long-term trend is still iffy. Wait a minute. This could have a gigantic head and shoulder bottom. That's the low to sh shoulder low July 5, oversold as well. Here's the October 13th, I yeah, exactly. Major October low, bullish engulfing, so far at the bottom. And the neckline would have, could we broke it, slanted across this top and this top right here. Therefore, approximately right there, where it tested the line. I got to do this real quick. Sorry about that. This is too close. Do, 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 do. There we go. And there we go. Oh, perfect. This uh, rally high was a test of the neckline, kind of like kind of like the S and P five hundred. <laughs> Excuse me. At the moment, going no place fast. Down 0. 70, 80, 60 at the moment. Nothing. No activity since I've started a yik yak. This index pulled back for two days and then shot through the roof big time with a gap, no less. Ha! Huh. And is maintaining all of its price range today, although a little bit lower, no big deal, well above the neckline. Breakout. Head and shoulder bottom. Obviously, the last shoulder low is much more distinct than some of the other indexes, the major ones we looked at in the beginning. Didn't see that until now. A little late, Stan, a little late. Next symbol, um, XLK. Same story here, identical. Your neckline starts here, across here, except we are just right about the neckline right now. So I'll draw that in later, but we're not significantly above or below the line, I can tell. It should be right about there, right about today's high and yesterday's high. Interesting. Otherwise, everything is there. Patterns there, bullish engulfing at the bottom of the last shoulder, bullish engulfing at the bottom of the market explanation point, period. <laughs> and then as the market was starting to work higher, there's a bullish engulfing right there. None of which, oh, except for October 13th, the others were never oversold, although they were somewhat close. Next symbol. I'm taking too long here. Um, I don't think there's anything significant happening here in most of these other symbols. I've looked at them uh, a couple times this morning, so I'm just going to pass through them. You know, they're mostly they're uh, a mix, a little higher, a little lower, depending upon the individual symbol. Um, none of which uh, super significant, from what I can tell. We did have a sell signal here in OIH just a couple of days ago, and today we've made a new low since. Great. The close wasn't that great, but we have a lower low. And XLV, nah, keep going down. XL, XLE, uh, cell signal may still work okay. XLU, XL, no, no, no. ITB, we didn't get stopped out. That was not a higher high. That's very, very, very close to today's high. Don't like to see it though. Um, KBE, nah. Okay, so, and the same story here. We're not out, we're still short. This is still potentially a good sell signal, but got a problem. Not profitable yet, that's one problem. Uh, same commentary. And this did get stopped out. I made a high higher than the bearish engulfing ER sell signal that's red yesterday. Today, it slipped back down a little bit. There's a gap to close. And lastly, XME. Hmm, doing okay. Got up to the short sale, short sell 
signal and just kind of stop rallying. Tiny loss. That's it. Have a good trading day. Oops, let's check the S&P real quick. Uh, here we go. And get out of the queues, which is a little bit lower on the day. Not really changing anything. <coughs> and here is the S&P, SPY. Today so far, yesterday's big rally early. And then a little bit of a topping out price action, but didn't really follow through this morning. Kind of a sloppy day and a half now. Hmm. So no place at the moment, but we need to close, at least from a psychological standpoint, above 400, but really above 400.23, 20, I think it is, which was the highest high. That's right, a few days ago until yesterday's new high, but we need to maintain that breakout, which yesterday it did, but today it's back down below that level again. So very, very iffy. It doesn't know what it wants to do momentarily. You have a great day. Bye-bye.